So folks, hey, Jenner and Mark Griffin here, and today we're going to look at the often discussed, somewhat controversial, Axton Hughes SVR. Let's just dive right in. So let's take a look at what comes in the special metal collector's tin. That did come a little dented. Got some logo strangeness on the top. Pull the cap off. Inside there is a black plastic tube. Come out. There we go. Not very thick metal. SVR. And inside we have our mod. Instruction manual. Oh, helps if we do it right side up. Charger, mod, batteries, everything that comes with it. Two cardos, trip tip, bottle. Let's take a closer look. So here's the logo stuff on the top. 2011 project, inhibition for mission, yourself, your family, other people, nature. I'm not quite sure what that's for. It's sort of odd. Instruction manual, pretty standard stuff. One, eight and a half, eleven page, double sided. Lots of type, tells you how to use it. I think we can figure those bits out. Charger box, more inhibition for mission. USB to USB mini cable. And on the other side, if I can get it out. The actual USB charger. Charger for 16650 and the 16340 batteries. Does not come with a wall charger, so you need to plug it into your computer or other items. And just a standard USB mini connection on the cable. And it's pretty much just your standard USB to USB mini. And then you need to use that little lower slot for the batteries. We'll look at that later. Mini tube, mini connector on the charger. Yeah, what's in the box? These are the Mark II cardamizers from Axton Hughes. They have a soft rubber whistle tip, standard Ego connection, recessed 510 in other words. Uh, soft whistle tip. Quite a lot of filling material in there. Um, it will hold quite a bit of juice. And they actually do perform pretty well. Um, that's a little off-center on mine. I'm not quite sure why the coil is way over. But it works okay. In here is included with the SVR a Cherry Vapes a drip tip that fits the Mark II cardamizer so you don't have to use that soft whistle tip. Uh, Kind of nice. Little bottle, uh, I guess, to refill your cardos. And then our two 16340 batteries. Three point seven volt, seven hundred milliamp hour Chinese special lithium batteries. Now they're listed as ICR. So I would assume that they are not safe chemistry lithium ion manganese IMR batteries. It does look like there is a protection chip on the top. But they are not IMR. And the SVR itself. Logo etched on the bottom. 
There are two vent holes on the production bottom. I know some other people have gotten SVRs that do not have vent holes on the bottom. Um, this production unit does. Also on that top cap. Pull off the top cap and your Ego style connector is exposed. Put the bottom cap, put that top cap over the bottom battery connector and you turn it into a you know, sleek even tube mod with an egoish connector on top. It is kind of a fingerprint magnet. So let's put our batteries in and give it a play. Now these batteries fit in here tight. Nice sealed top. In fact, I, I've put other like AW life pose in there and the little AW sticker on them almost gets pulled off by the edge of the tube. Fairly solid metal, not super heavy, but it feels quite solid enough. I wouldn't try running a car over it, but it's pretty sleek. Mark two cargo fits right on. Now, not everything I found fits over that because it is angled. It's not quite an ego connector because it doesn't have the outside threading for the outside. It only has the 510 part. So let's take a look at this again. Vent holes. Got them in the production model. So if yours doesn't have them, maybe you can get another model. And you can screw this back on the top. And I've noticed that when you don't come at this perfectly straight, you have a hard time screwing that top on and it can be a little squeaky so the first thing I did was sort of grease it up that's what she said but if you come at it not straight at all and I have this problem sometimes when I'm you know heading back to work and I'm just been on a break and I'm trying to get that top on so I can put it in my pocket if you don't come at it perfectly straight it doesn't screw on very well but anyway I like to keep it on the bottom here so that that's all one uniform size then you can still see those threads on the top but they don't stand out a whole lot now the button, that's in the middle setting, which is 4.5 volts. Hit it three times, goes to red, 5 volts. Three times again, drops back to the 4-point-ish volt range. Um, now you can turn the unit off. And you'll notice me taking the cardamizer off here for a good reason. Push. You have to hold that button down for a very long time to get the unit to flash and shut off. So you really don't want to fire your cardamizer or atomizer that long. It flashes a few times and then the unit will be off and pushing the button will not fire it. See? No fire. Now you hit it a couple times, bump, 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 and it will turn itself back on. But yeah, take your stuff off before you hold the button down for that long. Now, I went and got this spiffy oscillator because I figured, you know, we're going to talk about pulse width modulation. And I will when we get to the review part, but I have this little connector on the top that's pulling the positive and ground leads off the, or making the positive connection so I can read the flow of uh, voltage and other stuff through the unit. And when I push the button on the mod, you can see the wave, which is up and down, up and down really fast. So in other words, the unit is turning itself on and off faster than you can notice. We'll talk about that more in a bit. Um, my last set of commentary is it's hard to keep the batteries down in this little section of this little charger. I mean, it is kind of a cheap little charger. Most mods don't come with batteries and a charger, so I suppose having one at all is a plus. But you really have to be a little careful getting those batteries down into that lower section that does the 16340. Um, I put one in and the green light will go off indicating it's charging, but you really kind of got to be careful about getting them in there all the way so that it's hitting both the metal piece on the top and the spring on the bottom. And the red light will go out and the green light will come on when they are charged. Now it's light, it doesn't have a wall socket so you got to plug it into your computer. But I suppose being light and compact it's a nice travel unit. So. Pluses and minuses. So that's a close-up look at the SVR. Um, negative points. This is probably the, one of the chintziest chargers I've seen. But most mods don't come with chargers. And as a bonus, I suppose I might take this instead of my Ultrafire. Um, 
on a trip, and I have been taking it into the office and just playing it into the computer there, so... I suppose being light and cheap sometimes has its advantages. Um, I expected not to like this. Now, I'm not sure what I do. Um, I have plenty of mods that are infinitely variable in voltage so that I can fine tune it, you know, by point or by wattage or by wheel to get it just where I want it. I'm not limited to just three different settings and I can't vary from that at all. Um, I'm not a big ego person, so I don't really need an ego connector. And frankly, when you stick a regular atomizer on here, you know, unless you're, I suppose, using a drip shield or something, that might look a little funky as a connector. You know, but it'll work with any 510 device. It just, you know, looks a little odder. But that's a nitpick. Um, it is fairly solid feeling, and I think that's what I like about it. Um, in, in thickness of the body and weight, it's kind of pretty similar to the Buzz Pro, or the Infinity Pro, although that's a little longer. Um, it's just machined well. Um, it's solid enough. Um, it's not overly solid. Yeah, it was under 100 bucks. I may think that, you know, for just a multi, when I can get a, a Lava Tube or the Lava Tube Mini or some of those other mods at 80 bucks, this might be a little overpriced for what it is, but it's not bad. Um, I've mostly been using it with these Vision Cardamizers, which I really love for some odd reason. Um, but the Mark IIs that come with it are pretty good. They're pretty comparable to a dual-coil cardamizer, although they hold a little more liquid because they're a little wider with that Ego connector on the bottom, and it comes with that nice tray vapes tip. Um, I do these at the yellow setting, however. Pretty decent flavor. Let me do them right inhale. Not bad of vapor. Pretty decent flavor. Um, a little more muted than the Vision to me because it does have the filler material in there. But those are pretty decent cardamizers. Um, that's standard resistance, of course. Now on this, I want to go back to green because green seems to be plenty enough, the lowest setting for these Vision cardamizers. I don't know why, but I keep reaching for it. And it's been really convenient because I've been going into the office a lot more the past couple weeks to just stick this in a pocket. It's light, it's fairly solid, it looks attractive when other people see it. Um, you know, I can quickly cover it up and just hold it in my hand and then, you know, nobody's really asking me what it is. It could be a fancy pen, it could be whatever. It needs to be greased. And I pointed out, you know, you gotta get it straight, so sometimes when I'm coming back to the office and trying to get it on there really quick, it doesn't work very well. I'm not so sure I like it without that bottom cap on, because, you know, then the middle kind of sticks out. But that's a nitpick. I am glad that the production model does have vent holes. Um, I know that the model that Slipgator got does not. But I think his was a pre-production sort of model. Would I recommend this to everyone? Maybe not. Um, so I don't really want to give it a yay or a nay. I mean, I keep reaching for it. I keep using for it. it it's convenient. It's the smallest multi-voltage device I have. You know, it's not... Well, I suppose it is significantly bigger than an Ego battery, but it just has that kind of feel to it. I like the little lights. I like the little button. Um, it doesn't fire accidentally in my pocket. I don't think I put it in my bag too much. Um, and I rarely turn it off because you saw how long you have to hold the button down to get it to do that. That's a bit finicky. Um, you know, but other than that, I, I, I don't want to go with the hype and the story. 
and the pulse width modulation that it's using, we can talk about that. I showed the waveform on the oscillator. I'm not an electrician, so I was having some trouble with the oscillator. But basically, you know, I have the same exact stacked 16340s in here. When I push the button, it fires and it doesn't stop firing until I take my finger off the button. So the battery fires the whole time I have the button down at its current voltage or their current voltage. What the SVR is doing is when I push the button, it's and you saw that waveform, it's turning itself on and off faster than we can notice, which fools us and the coil in here to thinking it's getting a constant level of power, but it's really getting a fluctuating level of power. And if I turn the setting up here to the next highest one, it increases its duty cycle, which is the percentage of time that it's on as opposed to off when it's going on and off so fast. So to give us a higher voltage, it just is on a little more in that wave flow than it is off. And again, when I go to the highest, the third highest setting, it's on even a greater percentage of time to make it seem like it's giving a greater amount of voltage. Um, that also lengthens the life of the batteries because it's not on the whole time I'm holding my finger down. It's fluctuating on and off. So it's only on 40% of the time, 50% of the time, 60% of the time for the top setting maybe. Um, it's the same set of batteries stacked in another mod do not last as long as they last in here. This will last me all day at work and most of the night or into the evening fairly well. That's way longer than the same set of batteries will last me in the Buds Pro. And you can tell I've been running them side by side with Vision Cardamizers. I have to change batteries in the Buds Pro more than I have to change them in the SVR. They're on the same kind of cardamizer at roughly the same voltage. But this is not new. We have had pulse width modulation in the Egos since they came out. That's why regular voltage meters don't work on these because they're turning the power off really fast and they don't know how to read that. That's not the also the only mod that does that. The uh, VAPR Life, the Joker, well, I mean not the Joker, but the Diamante, the Pearl, and some of their other mods do pulse width modulation lengthens the battery life. There are other devices out there that do that. So that's not new. So let's not get into the controversy of that. They didn't invent it. They aren't even the first e-sig to use it. Um, but it does make the batteries last longer. Um, I want you take all those things, whether you have eco connectors, like eco connectors, think you could live with just three separate voltage settings, want a smaller tube mod just to hang around if you have something you think you can comfortably put on it, it's not bad. Is it at the top of my list? No. Is it my favorite mod? No. But for some reason, I keep reaching for it and I keep taking it all around with me. And I'm not quite sure why. It may be that I like these Vision Cardamizers so much. The Mark IIs that come with it don't work bad. They work fairly well. Um, you know, I showed that before with the drip tip. So, you know, your mileage may vary, but um, I think it may be a little overpriced, but it's not a bad little handy unit for out and about and just taking with you if you think you can live at one of those voltages. Oops, and I have it set too low again. But anyway, that's my look at the SVR. Is it going to replace all my fancy toys? No, but it seems to have warmed its way into my life somehow. Mm -hmm.